Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel for another Project Zomboid guide. Now, in this one, we'll be talking about all things zombies and how to deal with them in various ways and situations. The focus will be on things like stealth, combat, techniques, and tips to help increase your effectiveness against the hordes of undead that roam the post-apocalyptic wasteland of Kentucky. If you find this video useful, be sure to drop it a like and subscribe to the channel for more Zomboid news, guides, and gameplay content. I also stream on Twitch several times a week if you want to catch me live and ask me some of your questions. That's twitch.tv forward slash Mr. Atomic Duck. So, Project Zomboid has seen a massive influx of new players, and with that comes a lot of people that are going through their first experiences with the game. Now, Zomboid is a challenging experience to say the very least, and there are a bunch of little mistakes that new players tend to make when faced with zombies for the first time that can drastically impact their chances of survival. So, let's start with avoidance before anything else, and understanding how zombie aggro mechanics mechanics work in Project Zomboid. In some zombie games, you might find that the senses of the undead are pretty severely reduced on account of, you know, being all dead and stuff. Now, in Project Zomboid, the undead still very much have their wits about them, and as standard, can detect your presence from pretty far away if you're within their eyeline, and this is a key concept that new players need to understand. Just like your character has an arc of vision in front of them, so too does every zombie that you're going to meet. Once you get within that arc, the zombie will notice you and come shambling your way in pursuit. Whilst this can often be a big problem for new players, it can also work to your advantage with a little bit of experience. Catching one or two zombies eyeline within a group can serve to pull them away and make larger groups much more manageable. The goal here is to essentially break down that larger group into several small engagements. Now, next time you come up against a group that you consider to be impassable, gradually edge closer to that group until one or two break away. Then you can retreat to a safer distance and let them come to you. The idea is that we can repeat this process until the horde is properly dealt with. Now, while sound also plays a part in detection and aggro, most actions outside of firing a gun or driving a vehicle will have a much lower aggro radius than a zombie simply spotting you. Sound only really comes into play when entering a building. Opening and clambering through a window, opening or closing a door, fighting a zombie, all these things will tend to pull zombies inside of a small radius. Now, you'll want to pay attention to this on your first few playthroughs, and this will help you manage expectations later when it comes to how many zombies you're likely to draw whilst engaging in different actions. It's something that you'll get used to over time. Perhaps the biggest thing that I try to teach new people when they come by my streams and ask for some tips is when to take a fight, when to avoid it, and when to flee. And not just that, but how to do all of these things effectively. When you're faced with a group of zombies for the first time and they spot you, you're likely to do one of two things at that very moment. You're either going to stand your ground or you're going to run. It's the basic fight or flight response that determines how we deal with a life-threatening situation, right? We're going to take a look at both of these responses, but before we do, let's look at how you can determine which of them you choose within a matter of seconds. Firstly, how many are there? If it's one, two, maybe three zombies, the chances are that you can manage a group of that size with a little practice, but if it's any more than that, you need to carefully consider your options here. It only only takes one missed attack and it's game over. Second, what weapon do you have? And do you have one at all? Without a weapon, two or three zombies is the absolute maximum that you can reliably manage. With a basic weapon, like a rolling pin, you can maybe bump that up to four, but that's as far as it will go. Lucky enough to find a pickaxe, katana, baseball bat, or anything with a bit more damage, but you can maybe get away with one or two more on top of that with the right techniques. Lastly, what are your surroundings like? If you think you can put a lot of objects between you and them, you've already got a good understanding of where the zombies are around you, then maybe it's just best to flee and leave this group to their devices. But if you don't know the area around you and you're likely to draw a lot more zombies by running away, maybe you should stand and fight. Overall, the decision is yours, but these are the thought processes that I go through in that split second moment when I'm making my decision of do I stay and fight or do I turn tail and run to live another day. Now let's say we're going to fight. There's a whole bunch of strategies that you can employ to get better results. The main thing you want to avoid at all costs is being swarmed, especially if you're playing with multi-hit disabled. The key is cutting down your engagements to manageable sized groups or staggering their approach so that you're fighting one at a time. One of the best ways to do this is to backpedal whilst fighting. Standing still is going to get you surrounded and mobbed before too long and you're just going to be dragged down into the hordes. By retreating backwards as you fight, you're going to give yourselves key fractions of seconds between each attack where Zeds are still having to try 
might catch you. If you want to tie this in with another method for buying more time, a well-timed shove will usually be faster than your melee weapon attacks, especially if you're using a two-handed weapon of some kind. Sure, it won't damage the zombie, but it's going to stagger them backwards, buy you both space and time to make an attack with your weapon. If they fall over, that's even better. You might be able to land a ground attack if you kill the remaining zombies that are standing. And even if you don't, it's going to buy you more time. Now, speaking of zombies falling over, you might not know this one if you're a new player, but if you stand on top of a zombie that you've pushed to the ground, they actually won't be able to climb back to their feet. Now, this is especially useful if you're dealing with multiple zombies at once. And even if you have to step back off of the zombie in order to stay alive and continue to fight, it's still time where they are on the ground and unable to attack you. Other strategies to stagger zombies can include the use of trees, especially if you can catch one or two in a thicket of trees and leave some of them unimpeded entirely, which is going to mean that some of them will reach you sooner whilst others lag behind that let you break down the grouping into a more manageable format. We can also use things like fences to do this, and if you can get used to the timing, you can also use fences to land instant kills on zombies. Now, if a zombie is coming over a fence, there's a period of time when they are on the ground before they will try and launch an attack at you, and in which time you can instantly kill them if you land your attack at the right moment, because they're already on the ground and ripe for the taking. Now, you might need some practice with this strategy, because timing is everything, so give it a try a few times in one-to-one -one situations first, before attempting to deploy it against any sort of group. If you miss, it's going to mean that you get knocked back, potentially damaged, and even knocked over. And of course, being knocked over leaves you at risk of being swarmed whilst you're recovering from the fall and unable to break away. It's also worth noting, whilst we're talking about fences, that the high fences, you can actually double tap E to jump over them. Now, you're not always going to clamber over them successfully on the first try, so make sure you leave yourself a little bit of room if there are some zombies chasing you. But if you do climb over the fence, the zombies aren't going to be able to do that, and they're going to have to go all the way around to try to get to you. Similar to our strategy with low fences, you can also employ windows in combat. Open one, let in a zombie or two, kill them, and then leave the other zombies beating on different windows in the meantime. Again, it's just going to stagger their approach. So by this point, you're probably seeing a running theme when it comes to combat. Use anything you can to put things between you and the Zeds that are chasing you. The more you can stagger their approach, the better, as it gives you more opportunities for one versus one fights and leaves you less at risk of being swarmed and dragged down for lunch with the undead. Just a little tip that many people don't know before we move on to avoidance and stealth. Try to remember that sharp weapons of any kind will damage clothing that you'll see on zombies, whereas blunt weapons do not. So if you're after a zombie's fresh new jacket or bulletproof vest, whatever it is really, try to use something like a hammer or a baseball bat to preserve the condition of the clothing. Alright, so that's a crash course on combat. Now we move on to stealth and escaping zombies once you've got their attention. One of the biggest complaints I hear about Zomboid is that it's too difficult at the start, you draw a group of zombies and then try to get away, but basically end up pulling a whole lot more and eventually being caught, either due to being backed into a corner or running out of stamina and being fatigued. Now, more often than not, this just comes down to not knowing how to lose zombie aggro once you have it, or not understanding how their line of sight works. Similar to how we use items to slow down zombies during combat, we can employ similar strategies to slow down zombies or break their line of sight, and from there they're just going to pursue you to the point that they last saw you and try to regain vision from there. But there are some really easy ways to lose them once you get used to this system. Now the common misconception is that you need to get distance from zombies to lose them, and that isn't necessarily true. It's all down to that line of sight that we've been discussing. So a really simple way to lose zombies is to enter a building and leave out of the other side. Doing so is going to mean that all of those zombies that are chasing you are going to try and break into the building that you've just entered, because that's when they last saw you. And if you've done it right, they won't see you leave and will be too busy breaking into the building to actually chase you. Small thickets of trees can be useful too, so long as you can comfortably see the other side to know it's not going to land you in more trouble when you leave the tree line. This is going to slow zombies down and give you much more room to break line of sight. And if you want to pass through a tree thicket without getting caught on all the trees, simply right click on a piece of ground and select walk to. Your character is going to plot the safest route without going through any trees if they can help it. Another great tip for when you're being chased by a group of gnashing undead jaws is to remember that your standard walk speed is faster than that of a zombie's shamble. Now, why is this important? Well, if you're running from zombies, you'll not only be drawing 
more attention to yourself, but you'll be using up your stamina too. More often than not, that's going to end in you being fatigued and unable to escape or even attack. Try to use your stamina in short bursts to gain distance after you've broken line of sight, rather than using it all of the time. You'll get the hang of this at some stage, but as a rule of thumb, you can avoid using your alt key to sprint at all times. This is going to burn through your stamina like nobody's business. Stick to jogging with your left shift and use it sparingly. The other thing to remember is that crouching with C will lower your profile, leaving you less likely to be spotted, but it will also slow you down and you will no longer be able to outrun zombies at normal walking speed. I tend to use the crouch stance most of the time when I'm looting an area with zombies present just to reduce my chances of being seen. It's still good in some situations to lose them as well when it's combined with jogging. So that's it for me in this one guys, but if you have any tips that you'd share on combat and stealth with new players that might be watching this video, make sure to drop them in the comments. There's a whole lot of new players getting into their first runs right now, and I think it's imperative that we welcome them as a community and show them the ropes however we can for what is usually a very challenging and punishing experience. Special thank you to all of you that have been supporting me on Patreon and have been playing on our whitelisted server. You can find the link for that in the description if you're interested. And if you're new, consider clicking on the Discord link down there too and ask my community some of your questions. Thanks folks, and I'll see you all in the next one.